First at 10, domestic violence. This is an issue that affects many people, men and women around the country. But when it comes to getting justice in these situations, it can be hard. In a report you'll only see on ABC7, we explore reasons why and tell you about a group working to fix this issue. He pulls me by my hair, throws me on my back, begins to kick me, scream at me, and just beat the holy daylights out of me. Laura Cook's dark stories from her abusive relationship still play through her head. He beat me up for just falling on the ground with slippers on in the snow, pregnant. No, it, we are in war. It's he and I against each other because I'm trying to survive and he's trying to kill me. Cook stayed in this relationship for 13 years, but then she says one incident happened where everything changed after she got a phone call from a loved one with some disturbing news. The step-grandmother says, um, Laura, I've got some really bad news to tell you. And I said, what? And uh, she says um, his name, and she says he had molested the girls. I'm sorry. Um, and so could you imagine getting a phone call like that at that work? Cook says after this single incident, her stepdaughter turned her former husband in. He's now a registered sex offender and spent time in jail. But unlike Cook's situation, a lot of domestic violence cases either go unreported or dismissed. It's a problem that's happening right here in Amarillo as well. They may not be uh, too comfortable in the situation when it gets to that point in the process in the criminal justice system. That's where organizations like Family Support Services come into play. They help survivors like Cook with this cumbersome process of getting justice through the Domestic Violence Task Force. It's all about serving the victim and their needs and also um, trying to ensure that there's some aggressive prosecution of the offender in this case. The task force is made up of numerous law enforcement agencies around the city, plus many attorneys. The goal of this force is to make sure as many convictions happen in these cases as possible. But attorneys say it's not that easy. That some victims feel victimized twice, but first by the offender and then by the system. From 2013 to 2014, the Potter County Attorney's Office was presented more than 500 domestic violence cases. It accepted more than half, and of that, nearly 100 defendants pled guilty. From 2014 to 2015, the number of cases presented decreased by nearly 200. We see more cases involving elevated levels of violence involved. Um, and part of that may play into why our office is seeing fewer of them because if, for example, choking is involved or if it's a subsequent domestic violence offense after a conviction has been obtained in this office, it becomes a felony offense. Bromley says most of the times these cases fizzle out because the victim recants testimony, providing insufficient evidence to move forward. Angie Stovall, who works with women going through domestic violence on a daily basis here at Family Support Services, says other factors play in as well. The victim uh, may have even gone so far as to sign something called a writ of non-prosecution with the district attorney's office or the county saying, you know, I don't want to be involved in this process anymore. Brumley says the task force has since adopted new procedures to help cases move along. The protocol was fairly strict and fairly regimented that an officer who, who, who had the facts before him that even suggested it was an assault and domestic violence was generally expected to file that case as an assault and domestic violence rather than maybe another offense that fit the facts better and perhaps was easier or more suitable like to prosecution. And Cook says she hopes women will find justice like she did. Be a survivor of domestic violence because I'm no longer a victim. I'm victorious and I, I just give it all to God. Now there is a good ending to Cook's story. She currently works as a counselor at Family Support Services to help other women. The organization is always open to anyone in need. To learn more about their services, head over to our website, connectamarillo.com. Well, it was a beautiful day outside today, and the sun finally showed up after all that rain we've been having. Let's check in.